invocation. These are the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hank, of the failed farmers and short order cooks who tilled and tore the soil of Southern Ohio in the days that became years that became confusion. These are his words, poor bastard, who roared himself ragged during the reign of so-and-so and his valiant pals. Hear the summons, O wanderers and warriors. See me pulling the planks from your porch. Woe unto ye, corporate communicators. I behold the oily ends of your extended lunches. Yea, I have been sent to root out and pull down, to lubricate and decimate, to build and to plant. Who will accompany me on my trail of frustration? Who will lend me a button? I have seen and will give voice to my grief. I will be delivered COD. May the words of my mouth and the declamations of my fury tear holes in the outerwear of the people. Let them feel the hot gust. The book goes mainly back and forth between two characters. That one, that, that was Jeremiah's voice, and the other character we meet, um, Bruce. Bruce is a kind of student of, the, of Ohio, uh, and so his titles have annoying information in them, like, such as, Chillicothe was the first capital of the Ohio Territory. It's two, and once I've dropped off my load of loaves and Twinkies at the state pen in and out, I can spend the afternoon smoking at the Indian Mount State Park. Dispatch doesn't need the van till 5.30, and each cigarette burns off a little of the day's shame. No one's looking for me here. But halfway through my first fire, I hear a man at the gate standing with his arms outspread like he is trying to call down the rain. He is making roaring noises in his throat, and when the ranger asks him to move along, he starts yelling, What unrighteousness have your fathers found in me that now they are gone from me? Something like that. The ranger is just a kid, probably working off student loans, so I say, Listen, buddy, do you need a ride or what? Right away, he grabs his army duffel and slings it into my truck. He sits on the floor and back next to a crate of snowballs. Then he asks, what is thy name? I can hardly keep myself from laughing, but I answer, Bruce Gray, scholar and bread man. Jeremiah shakes my hand and looks straight into my face. His hands are already scarred and yellow with calluses. Are you upright and holy? Sure. Can you transcribe the words I speak? I can type if that's what you mean. Good. I thank you for your kindness. It will not go unnoticed if you catch my drift. I catch it. Drive on. Sixteen percent of people's residents report German ancestry. Way back before his heart broke, I suppose Jeremiah was just as crazy as all his neighbors. But that was long before I met him. By then, he'd been seen cursing dumpsters in, Rin in Lynchburg, scolding billboards and McDonald's customers even as far as Peebles. As for me, I'd been feeling embarrassed, knowing full well that even my loneliness was common, that my profound despair was a tired cliché. I dropped out of grad school and disappointed my mentors because I can't see myself fitting into the role of expert in pomo flimflam. If only I could yada yada instead of blah blah blah. And then, to top it all off, I fucked up the closest thing I'd had to a family since I left my sad mother to her lists and memories. I was in purgatory, delivering faux-baked goods to gas station groceries, mini-marts, and convenience stores in southern Ohio from Athens to Columbus. Of course, I thought he was nuts in a harmless hobo way. And when I gave him a box of ho-hos, he nearly cried from gratitude. It had been a long while since I had done something good for anyone. So I invited him home for a shower, an old pair of pants, dinner, and a couch. Why he made the decision to promote me from chauffeur to secretary and aide is a mystery to me, maybe because I said yes. The baked sign on the paint, the baked painted on the side of my cab had been scraped off by some bored schoolboys in Clark, so the side of the truck just said goods. That too may have been enough, desperate as he was for signs that the world had not completely abandoned him. So Bruce and Jeremiah take up together for a little bit and wander around Ohio. Jeremiah preaches at people at various locations, uh, and Bruce observes and tells my narrative for me. Um, and so this is a little ways, and there are a few poems in the voices of other characters um, that they meet. This is one of those. Uh, yeah. It's called Ashland Radio. There he was just walking down the street, singing. Good day, sunshine. Then he goes raising the roof, crashes into me wearing that same old shaggy dress. I'm thinking, what's it all about? 
He wants to hold my hand. He's funny that way. I'm like, you'd better watch your step. You'll be a woman soon. He shouts, lets it all out. I know now it's your destiny to be the king of pain. So here we are. Now entertain us. He started talking at me. Get up. Stand up. It don't mean nothing. Not this time. If you want to sing out, I'm your man. Rome if you want to. But nothing's going to change my world. He can't hold back. Falls into a burning ring of fire, calling out around the world. Something in my heart keeps telling me, don't talk back. But enough is enough. Can't stand no more. I hit him with my best shot. Whoop, there it is. His eyes too bloody to see. I could have danced all night. But Jane says, don't be cruel. Take me to the river. <laughs> I'm going to just read one more. Um, shortly after this, Jeremiah decides that they need to go to the center of all iniquity, which, of course, if you're east of the Mississippi, is New York. Um, no offense to Chicago. Uh, so the, he's just announced this, and uh, Bruce has responded with suspicion. But this is Jeremiah speaking. Slopping in the rain between Wadsworth and Pope. Yea, in the city I will speak the truth. Hey ho, the truth in the place of iniquity. I will warn the people in their linen hearts. I will tell them to turn, turn, turn. What more can I do but harangue when the sky hangs precarious like a vase on a lawnmower? How can they fail to hear me when they know I speak straight from the source? Their cell phones are magnets pulling, pulling them to another blank signal. The people are lost without their wonder. They fuss and fret but have no fury. Yea, I was sitting amidst the wrenches and petunias when the voice of the Lord came ringing down like a game show winner's fanfare. It said, Who will seize my country with conviction? Who will lead us into a new season? Yo, I said, I'm your man, send me. But you are tarnished and despoiled, sad fool. You cannot even care for a boy. How can you save the whole people? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Thanks. <laughs> 